Okay, first thing we need to do to make a tessellation is make sure that we have a perfect square, or at least as perfect as possible. So I went ahead and made this template out of transparency paper so that you could measure. And if I were you, I'd probably have your kids draw a line and then cut along the line so that your template doesn't get ruined. So you'd cut, and again, you want as perfect a square as you can have. Then you, give, you have some options. So the first option is that you can make one single design, like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut along this line, and then this piece gets taped to the opposite side. Now, the other option to make it a little bit more challenging for yourself is you can do a design here and then a design on one of these other sides. So it's got to be on the top or on the bottom. Um, we can go ahead and do that. You also want to keep in mind that whatever you are drawing is something you're going to have to trace repeatedly. So you want to be careful with that. Also, it's kind of nice if you start in the corners. So we're going to cut those out. And if you decide to change your design as you cut, that's perfectly fine. Because if it's going to be difficult to cut, then it's also going to be difficult to trace. And you want to cut as closely to the corner as you can. Now this piece gets cut out. And you also don't want to go too low right here because you're going to need this piece to kind of be a strong piece for you. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. All right. So once you have these pieces cut out, then you're literally going to take them and move them to the opposite side. Yeah, these are tessellations. So notice I cut from the corner here at the top. I'm going to just make sure that it gets taped right up to the corner just like it was. It's got to be directly across from the original spot. Exactly across because what happens when you do a tessellation, it's a repeated pattern of the same thing. So we're going to tape this. You also want to be really careful about taping because if you're off by a little bit, then it can have the potential of ruining your whole project. Okay, so same thing with this piece here. You're going to take this and you're going to move it to the opposite side and tape. Now, it's kind of nice because you have these lines that you can line up with. You want to make sure that it's nice and neat as best you can do. And you put a little piece of tape. Now, I'm only putting a small amount of tape for now just because I'm showing you how to do it first. But eventually, you want tape all the way across so that it's this nice, sturdy piece that you can trace over and over again. So this is what I have. This is the pattern that's going to be filling your entire paper. And you're going to take it. Now, usually I would have really large drawing paper. But you pick a spot to start in. And you very carefully trace, usually in pencil. I'm only doing it in pen so that you can see it on the webcam. But the idea is to be patient. If you go too quickly, you'll make mistakes. And I know from experience, if you make a little mistake now, that becomes a really big mistake as you finish your project and you end up with a kind of a mess on your paper. So as you trace, you want to make sure that it doesn't move. Because if it moves any place, you're going to have to take a little bit of time and make sure it's set up exactly the way it's supposed to be. Otherwise, like I said, one little mistake now turns into a gigantic mistake later. So continue to trace, doing your best not to move this at all. Once you've finished that, you can remove it and see what you've got. Now, some people will look at this and say, oh, I see like a guy that's running, or I see um, a dog, or I see something. And that's perfectly fine, because then after you have made that pattern repeatedly, you have a full page of this same shape over and over and over again. 
So you would trace again, being very careful, making sure that you're not rushing like I just did here, and you would color it. So for my kiddos, you could either color this in a solid color, or if you see some kind of image inside here, you would, you know, put little eyes, you would make fur, however it is that you decide if you see a robot, you'd make little parts. And so you'd have this wonderful large piece of, of art.